Today's healthcare system is frantic to find a solution to the chaos that characterizes a portion of America's medical facilities. Many believe that one of the most viable solutions to the current mess is the electronic health record, particularly those which consist of computerized physician order entry systems. What we are here to discuss today is why EHR and CPOEs are not the fast and fabulous fix that Americans have hoped would save their health care. We'd like to start today's discussion with Fred. Fred is a typical busy working American who hopes to someday witness efficiency at his doctor's office. Fred's doctor thought the efficiency could be attained through the purchase of an electronic health record system with the capability for computerized order entry. Unfortunately, the system has glitches and the staff is having a hard time learning. Last time Fred was in the office, he had to wait 30 minutes for his appointment because the nurse had trouble entering the previous patient's data into the system. He then waited 15 minutes while the doctor tried to pull up his record, and in the end, he had to return to the office because he was given the wrong prescription at the pharmacy after someone at the doctor's office had entered the prescription into the system wrong because they were distracted. Fred is only one of the many patients who suffers at the hands of electronic health records and computerized physician order entry. Luckily, there was no medical error at his visit. Currently, it is hard to convince us that EHRs and CPOEs are worth the time and effort. Many things go wrong, such as decre decreased productivity among doctors and nurses, increased errors, which as we saw in the case of Fred, include prescription errors, broken communication among healthcare workers, little or less than expected cost reductions, and an overall sense of increased frustration. Many clinicians experience a decrease in productivity due to the extra time they spend on the EHR or CPOE entering or looking up data. It is often faster to simply write orders out. In their article about increased mortality after implementation of a CPOE, Hahn and colleagues describe how some systems do not allow clinicians to access the same patient's file at once. For example, if the pharmacist were looking at Fred's file, his doctor could not view his file at the same time. This leads to frustration and wait time, not to mention it increased the risks of errors in an emergency if a clinician cannot access the necessary file when needed. That chance of increased errors is even more likely with the alert systems built into many EHRs and CPOEs. Patients can seriously suffer if an alert is delayed or simply doesn't go off. Doctors run the risk of prescribing the wrong medication if a patient's allergy alert doesn't go off. At the same time, there is so much room for human error. Picture the busy doctor's office where a nurse forgets to finish processing a patient's prescription order or other necessary information because she was distracted by her beeper going off or her colleague talking to her. While these distractions are just as prevalent without the EHR, they can be extremely detrimental in a busy office environment where there is no paper record to double check the information and that information is just gone into thin air when it doesn't get put into the system. In an article about unintended consequences of information technology in healthcare, Ash and colleagues point out that computers cause a breakdown in communication. Clinicians need to speak to each other face to face in order to be on the same page regarding a patient. Teamwork is essential to quality healthcare and communicating via little information over the system is not good teamwork. There is no way to ensure that the right person will get the information you need them to have unless you tell them yourself. All these downfalls, decreased productivity, increased errors, and breakdowns in communication have even proven to significantly worsen results. In their research, Hahn and colleagues found increased mortality after the implementation of CPOE in pediatric practices. The results are significant and show the need for either abandonment of the CPOE or major changes in use. We also argue that there is little to no cost reduction with EHRs and CPOEs. Research shows that many times the initial system and implementation costs, along with upkeep, and are not outweighed by benefits. In addition, it takes a great deal of time to train staff on how to use these technologies. We all know that time is money. The more time staff spends away from work trying to learn the system, the more money spent on additional staff to serve patients, not to mention the time wasted after training when staff needs to troubleshoot the system while on the job. Overall, at this time, these technologies foster a great deal of unnecessary frustration. Many clinicians fear the unknown and are not willing to truly learn the technology. This increases the risk of skipping key steps, which can lead to errors. 
Computers and technology definitely increase our communication capabilities, however, they take away face-to-face -face communications, which is highly important with the emotional and sensitive topics in our healthcare. Finally, there simply doesn't seem to exist significant cost reductions, which is disappointing at best. We do, however, recognize the potential greatness of EHR and CPOE capabilities. All of these downfalls, except perhaps the communication breakdowns, can be extinguished through the creation of more advanced and flawless technological systems. A lot can be learned from these flaws within today's systems. Campbell and colleagues perhaps put it best when they say, Identifying and understanding the types, and in some instances the causes of unintended adverse consequences, will enable system developers and implementers to better manage implementation and maintenance of future projects. There is definitely hope for the future and full success of EHR and CPO technology. However, that day is not today.